Hello, hello, and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is day two of our Adobe live stream uh, on branding and identity with Chris Bernay. Um, hey, Chris, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? I am really excited to see this brand come to life. Um, it looks like we've got a couple people in the chat already. We've got Jack Watson. Hello, Caitlin. Caitlin, I think you were here yesterday, so welcome back. Um, Brea, welcome. We're really happy to have you guys here. Um, if you're sticking around from our daily creative challenge that just wrapped up, um, welcome. And we hope to see you for the rest of this live stream. Um, if you haven't checked out our daily creative challenge, it's hosted by Paul Trani every day at 1130 AM Pacific. Um, it's a really great way to connect with other people in the Behance Live community um, to showcase your work. It's a lot of fun. Um, and if we've got people joining us from YouTube, make sure you head on over to the Behance site. It's be.net slash Adobe Live. Um, that way you can participate in our chat. We've got more people popping in. Um, Zeka, Chris, Annika's back. Welcome back, Annika. We're really happy to have you here. We're really excited. Um, so like I mentioned, this is day two of Branding and Identity with Chris. Um, we started a really awesome um, music festival branding system yesterday that we're going to finish up today. Um, so... Without any further ado, Chris, do you want to start talking a little bit about where we were yesterday and um, get us into today's round of design? Yes, of course. So yesterday we were working on thumbnailing process. We had at the beginning three different names options. One was Go Festival, then Ya yeah Festival, and one of the persons in the chat choose Jump, and we voted up and we choose jump jump was the winner so i was working on the jump and i created two different styles on the thumbnails i was working on geometrical shapes and then the second option was to work on shape based or inspired by balloons and the same we bought it and we choose the balloonish style for the load type and so I was working on Fresco at the beginning, doing all the sketches, all those thumbnails. And after that, we jumped to, <laughs> to Illustrator <laughs> and we started working on vectors. And on the vectors, I was showing how to work on the lines, giving some hints and ideas about how to manage all the vectors. And this is kind of the process, actually the process itself. And our last, one was we're working on that massive board. artboard again <laughs> yep and we have a massive board look at this for this logo type is huge it's totally unnecessary but sometimes you need it and the idea is to have the ability of coming back to some older um internal revisions revisions from yourself so if you want to jump back to the j the first one because it was looking better you just grab it and it is and this is the final result from yesterday it needs a little bit of more work we're going to be working though so i already have some ideas of what's missing and mm -hmm. um, we're going to be working adding festival work to it and we're going to choose a font from adobe fonts and also we're going to be working on color system or color palettes and if we have time we're going to work on the lineup so that's so the plan for today really great conversation yesterday chris is kind of a master at choosing color um so i don't know if we've got some really familiar faces in the chat today who might remember our color conversation yesterday but everyone was really excited to see how what your color process looked like so i'm excited to get into adobe color with you at some point during this stream sure so before I start working, uh, I would like to show one more project just for talk a little bit about typography and color system and how to make everything related to the festival uh, concept and the festival purpose. So this is Terra Sonica. This is from Ecuador, a country full of nature. And this Terra Sonica was a festival Actually, the tagline is sing to the earth and it was related. Everything was related to take care of, of the planet. So the idea is to show the logo type. This is the icon for the logo type, which was inspired by uh, one of their huge volcanoes they have in the country. Hmm. And you can see how organic was the logo type inspired by the earth. Then the same, we have different illustrations, all based on nature. And you can see the rain. It was a nice idea for the moment, like straining music. 
um, you can see the selection of the typography is totally like ground, right? It's really communicating that nature, natural feeling. Yeah, um, absolutely. The idea was a little bit about showing this briefly. Like you can see the rain again, how the communication of the festival is clear. There's a purpose for this music festival. We are talking about kids and having fun. And this is totally something different. This music festival is just looking for inspired people or the audience to take care of the planet. Mm -hmm. And the communication is related to it. Those are the social media posts. Here's the, the thumbnailing and all the process by hand before the iPad Pro <laughs> exists. <laughs> so <laughs> it was more about paper, pencil, and erasers. Um, I'm still using it. This is why I have my drawing board. Um, this is another project. So reject the low type. And that's it. You can find it on my big hands. I place it right now as a second project. So you can take a look and read it. It's really interesting, I think. Yeah, if you guys aren't already following Chris on Behance, if you go to the little chat sidebar, um, you can click info right next to chat and you can go to his profile and give him a follow and check out more of his work in depth. Um, and Chris, something that I really think is super fascinating about music festival branding as a whole is that they're all very specific and unique looking, but there is mm -hmm. kind of this vibe of very music festival vibe about a lot of music festival um, branding mm -hmm. that like, as soon as you see a music festival branding, then you kind of get exactly what it is right away. And that's, that's a really cool sort of line to walk is how do you make something really unique, but also speak to the fact that this is a fun music festival. Totally. So it needs to be related as we talked yesterday, like, you can yeah. differentiate your product or your service or your festival, but somehow you need to get into that area and make it easy for, for the people for saying, oh, this is a music festival and it needs, looks like a music festival. Yep. So, I don't know okay. if we've got anyone in the chat who has favorite music festival branding that they've seen. Mm -hmm. I think my personal favorite, because I'm from the Bay Area in California, I love the Outside Lands music festival branding. But if we've got anyone with other favorites out there, maybe like at EDC, um, Chris worked on Dirty Bird. Um, there's so many different um, music festival brandings out there. So we'd love to hear if you guys have any favorites. Um, and we've got Caitlin, Annika. Hey guys, welcome back, Ariel. I remember you from yesterday. Voodoo Val, the moderator of my dreams is here. Um, super happy to see some familiar faces. Hey, Daniel, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, Christine, Gareth, we're really happy to have you guys here. Awesome. Okay. The idea is to work on the logotype. Let's start working some little things I would love to do. Yesterday, oh, where am I? Here. Yeah. Lost my cursor. So I just brought this back because this is catch. This thumbnail looks way better than this one. And I think what we were missing on our last option or our last step of the load type is this merging stuff between the signs. So mm -hmm. we're gonna recap on this stuff and I'm gonna be working on this and then we're gonna start working on festival work, just using a typography, a font. And after that, we're gonna work on color system. So let's start. I think actually it's gonna be better. To... Now I'm using this, I'm going back because I'm looking for the outlined version of it because I needed to redo all the stuff I made after. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna be overlaying? So it's let's see, Marco, Outside Lands never disappoints. Cool, do we have another San Francisco guy here with us? Um, we also have Vans Warp Tour is another favorite. Hugh says Hardly Strictly. Um, Voodoo Val, ha ha core, you are incredible. Thank you, Voodoo Val, I love you so much. Um, and Chris, you also mentioned that we're gonna be going over into Adobe fonts to start looking for mm -hmm. fonts that could pair with this. So before we yeah. get to that point, if we have anyone in the audience who has maybe any cool font recommendations for us, you could drop them into the chat and we can check out something maybe that you think. I think just as a little quick reminder, this is a music festival that's aimed at 
um, youths under the age of 18. Um, and so we really want to convey a certain amount of energy with this branding. We really want it to appeal both to a younger audience um, who can have a really great and safe time at a music festival, but also to appeal to the younger audience's parents who's going to be taking them this, to this thing. And so these are all some great things to keep in mind. If you have any font recommendations for us, we would really love to hear them. Um, so that when Chris jumps over to Adobe Fonts, we'll have a great starting point. Mm -hmm. So uh, look at this. Uh, it, this is already looking way better. Yeah, I love the overlapping. Yeah, the overlapping is awesome. I think that was missing here. Now it just jump. This is annoying me a little bit, but then I'm gonna figure it out, potentially doing a frame around it. Ooh, and um, Annika says, oh, yes, the new Adobe fonts recommendation feature is also super nice. Annika, I maybe need you to clarify what you're talking about. I don't know what this is. Chris, do you know what the Adobe fonts recommendation nope. feature is? This is the first time I hear about it. Okay, well, this is news to me, so I'm going to need to explore this. You're schooling mm -hmm. me on the Adobe products, Annika. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is going to work, I think. Just testing fast. This is something good. You can do it also untidy, but at least just to validate an idea. And I think, okay, potentially it can work. I'm gonna keep it just for a reminder, as a reminder for later. So, okay, let's work on the effects and then we're gonna work on the monotone or monochrome. So I'm gonna create the shades. The light is coming from here. Right? So this is something you need to have in mind all the time. If the light is coming from here, you can have the bright and some shiny brightness at the corners as we made yesterday. Right? Let me know if I'm wrong. Hmm. And then it's gonna have some shadows and the shadows in this case gonna be potentially here here it's coming here this is projecting some shadow here agree the j is projecting shadow over the u yep yeah that's what i was thinking too and so let's see we've got um one more shadow so this should be there that's gonna be better and we're gonna have more shadow here this is a map i'm kind of mapping right now and okay, mm -hmm. where are the shadows? Here, 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 here also. It's gonna be a nice one. Here and here. So Juan in the chat says fonts from Ono Type might be worth a look. Ono Type, um, Chris, I don't know if you're familiar with Ono Type. No. No, they Learning. do some really, really cool, super experimental typefaces. For anyone in the chat who doesn't isn't familiar with Ono Type Co. Check them out on Adobe Fonts. Also check them out on Instagram. Um, they're amazing. They're super cool, really fun. Like they do very cool sort of retro typefaces, some really cool bubbly typefaces. Um, fun personal story, but I took a class on how to make a typeface uh, like about a year ago actually. And I met the founder of Ono Type Co. His name is James Edmondson, I think. And he was super cool and like super crazy. Um, and he like judged my typeface or he rated my typeface for me, which was really scary. Um, but Great. Awesome. super, super talented guy, super, super cool typefaces. So you guys should check them out. Let's um, talk about the yellow. So we're going to be working in colors and this is something nice to talk about. The yellow is a tricky color. It's actually one of my favorite colors. My own brand is color yellow, actually. And this is why I started working on yellow. Yellow is a really flexible color. You can combine the yellow with almost every single color in the color system. How could you make a darker yellow? You have two different options. And this is happening only on yellow. You can add more black. So you're going to change the saturation. And you're going to get something closer to master and ugly colors. <laughs> yeah. So it's not way my favorite. Not but a great way of doing a darker yellow is about adding red. 
and you have some better shades. It's more vivid. It's an orange, actually, obviously, but you can see it looks like a shadow, mm -hmm. but it's not as boring as just adding black. Yeah, it looks more natural that way, too, because black just it became really muddy. It just doesn't seem like that's how it would look in real life if it mm -hmm. was a shadow. Sour lights. Add another one here. So would you say if we were to like take that advice and apply it to other colors? So like for yellow, you might add a little bit of red. Um, and I'm sure there's some color theory in here that I'm like not quite grasping. But if we were to do like blue, what color might you add to that to give it more of a darker, more toned, shadowed look? So it depends because it is about got every single color has its own trick. Actually, mm -hmm. oh, I have an issue here. Sorry, I need to fix this. Uh, okay. oh, here we go. Oh, it's looking nice. So for every single color, things work differently. And it's more about our interpretation of color. Oh, sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. Let's play. So we have here, we're gonna choose a red. So in this scenario, we have three. This scenario, if you add black, it's gonna be a nice blue anyway, which is, it is not happening the same with yellow. Mm -hmm. That's what I was talking about. So if I add yellow, you can see it's totally dying. It's not a vivid color at all. In blue, it works. And you can do the same thing as yellow. Like, okay, I'm gonna convert this into an orange shade. It's gonna be a darker yellow, that's a perception. But on blue, if you go to the side, you're going to get more purple, which is the same level of intensity. Yeah, and to the other side, you're going to get into cyan, which is lighter than the blue, right? So you don't have the same solution for both yeah. colors. Actually, if you want to make a lighter blue, you just see I just changed the hue and I have a lighter one, or I can just add more white. So the color slider is a really great tool for anyone who's working in Illustrator to kind of explore around with different color variations or different color tones of a different color. I mean, if you're trying to achieve a shadow effect, that's a great way to kind of experiment and see what happens if I add more black, if I add more white, if I change the hue. Um, and that's, I think that's a really good tool to remember to use if you're feeling maybe a little bit stuck with color or if a color that you're choosing from the other color pickers isn't quite feeling right, is to maybe just tweak the color ever so slightly using the color slider. Yeah, I invite everyone to explore colors and work in a different way. Avoid just choosing one color and say, okay, this is going to be blue and just exploring here or playing. Just use the same system I just made, just replicating, copying, copying, and trying different ones. So we have Gall back in the chat. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again today. Caroline is also back today. Welcome. Uriel, I think I said hi to you already, but welcome back. We're really glad you guys popped back in for day two. Um, I would like to remind anyone, if we've got anyone watching over on YouTube, to head on over to Behance and join us over here so that you can join us in the chat. Um, if you go over to be.net slash Adobe Live, you'll pop right into our live stream on Behance. Um, and we'd love to answer any questions that you might have about the software that Chris is using. Um, if you have any font suggestions for us, we would love to hear those from you guys. Um, otherwise, just come in and say hi. Um, tell us where you're tuning in from. Um, tell us where you design. Tell us what your favorite Adobe program is. We wanna hear from you guys. I'm gonna show a trick I am used to do all the time. So I have different elements in different levels. This is above, this is below the black outline, and this is obviously below everything else. And I want to add more shadow here, but being covered by the black outline, right? Mm -hmm. One trick is to, I already set this up on the background, in the middle, between both, between the, the fill and the outline. I'm gonna double click and I get into this individual element, but if I draw again, it becomes into a group. Mm, yeah. You can see I'm overlaying here. 
and when I go out from this object, it's already in the background. Wow, that's super awesome. It's helpful. It's really helpful. So that when you double click on an object, I think that's called mm -hmm. putting it into isolation mode. Is that right? That's right. And then you're so totally right. if you're in isolation mode with one object and then you create mm -hmm. another object while still in isolation mode, does it automatically group those two objects? No, they are not grouped. They just put them on the same level. On the same level. That's right. Cool. You can see now if I double click here, it is just this one. It is not a group. Just a that's, trick. That's a great trick. That's really awesome. Yeah. It helps a lot. Um, All about have, saving time. Um, Alejandra Bravo says, Hola, Chris. Hey, she's a really great friend of mine. Very How's cool. How's it going? Okay, A says, Chris says, Andres. Um, Bruno says, Hola from Argentina. Okay, so we've got Hola, some friends Bruno. here. Super cool. Um, Marco Flores says, first time in chat, but been watching on YouTube for a while. Hi from Sacramento. Welcome, Marco. Uh, Thanks for Marco, joining us I, over on YouTube. Or, I've been in Sacramento or, last week. For joining us on Adobe Live. Um, Sacramento is cool. I have a lot of family in Sacramento. I'm from California myself, so awesome. I love Sacktown. <laughs> um, Eric says, hey. He's saying hey to Voodoo Val, but welcome, Eric. We're happy to have you. Um, Alwyn is from South Africa. Yes, I remember that yesterday. You said, um, I love Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Those are probably the two... Two of my favorite programs too. Chris, do you have a favorite program, Adobe program? Illustrator. Yeah. It's my partner already. It's just like part of my life. <laughs> Actually, I think it's the very first software I am used to install on my computers. That's the very first thing I need to know. It's Before Illustrator in that else. computer. <laughs> I don't need anything else. I love that's, Photoshop, but Illustrator is Illustrator. That's a true testament. You're like when you got a new computer, you're like, what do I need most? I have to have Illustrator. <laughs> yeah, and my fonts. <laughs> Who we have Marian from Argentina as well. Um, Quinn hi, says, hey, everybody. Are these, do you have some coworkers here saying hi to you, Chris? I have many friends now, many it's, friends. Super cool. Yeah, Marion Pican, she was a classmate on high school. Ooh, that's awesome. It's yeah. really good to see familiar faces out there. Yep. Uh, Voodoo Val says, what? We're close enough to encounter each other, Corey, in a very non-creepy way. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Val, just to think I might have like passed you on the street in Sacramento at some point. Ugh. Like misconnections. I feel I feel sad that I didn't actually run into you. Um, Annika says OO oh, oh, and Adobe Fresco. Yeah, we were using Adobe Fresco yesterday, right, Chris? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. That's a great place to kind of sketch out your ideas when you're kind of just trying to get as much out as possible, developing a concept before you really take it in and perfect anything. Adobe Fresco is a great way. There's so many brushes to play with. There's so many different sizes of brushes to play with and textures and everything. So you kind of are able to like, simulate that like pencil on paper kind of vibe and just kind of get as much out as possible before you take it over into Adobe Illustrator, for instance. You're almost there with the load type. Um, Eric Sue says, I need XD and Photoshop almost every day. What do you do, Eric, that you need those two programs the most? Ooh, Augusto from Sao Paulo, Brazil is here. Welcome, Augusto. Thank you for joining us. Gal says, how's everyone today? Chris, how are you doing today? I know you had kind of a stressful morning with the internet. Yep, I was running out of internet this morning. It was totally down, not working. I got so stressed, so bad, so worried about it. But... Here we, are. Here we are. <laughs> We're also happy to have you here. <laughs> um, we have jump. Gall, I am doing well. Thank you for asking. It is a rainy morning here in Portland right now, but you know it comes with the territory. Sometimes the sun will pop out, sometimes it'll start pouring rain. I kind of love it. Um, okay, we have jump. Let's look for typeface for festival 
And awesome. I think we're going to add festival potentially first of all down here. Or maybe just here, like this kind of layout. And this is too, it's going up so much. Let's modify this. So we're we have. Share it up. Oh, yeah, I'm loving the share tool. Mm -hmm. It took me way too long to start using share. I don't know what, why I didn't discover it sooner. It okay. changed my life. So let's talk about this tool. I'm doing some shortcuts here and I didn't talk about them. Okay. I choose share tool, share tool from the toolbar. And if I grab, you can grab it from everywhere, but the reaction of the element is going to be different. If I grab it here, it's going to be tough for manipulate or work with it. I'm moving just less than millimeters. My mouse is just moving slightly and it's going crazy. Mm -hmm. So I recommend to go to the sides. The, the far you can, the farther you can, the better. So I grab it from here and now I'm feeling more comfortable about moving this. It doesn't look like that, but it is more comfortable. So That's kind of a cute little animation you got cute. going on there. I like it's it. It's like bubble gum. Yep. It's like <laughs> a little chewy. Yep. And this is nice, actually. Look at this. It's like going a little bit backward. Like the wind, it's just blowing on the balloons. <laughs> I'm going too far, sorry. And then if you grab, if you keep the shift pressed, you go straight to different lines not this way here's vertical and horizontal i'm pressing shift right now so that's kind of doing it along the same like mm -hmm. axis or something yeah you guys in the chat if you haven't used the shear tool it's really powerful i mean it's it's a great way if you're even if you're working just with plain typography um, it's a great way to kind of give your type an italicized look, make it go up along a um, go up along a line, or like make text sort of feel a little bit more energetic and to give it some more um, motion. We have Valentina from Italy. Hey, Ajitesh. Valentina! Welcome, Valentina. Ajitesh, thank she you. was a classmate at Cooper Union. Welcome, Valentina. Thank She's you for joining us. She's an outstanding us. type designer. She is awesome. Simply awesome. Valentina, maybe you can drop your website or some of your type designs into the chat so people can check out your work. That would be really cool. Um, Okaidi from, I hope I say, I'm saying your name correctly. Okaidi from Nigeria. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you, Okaidi, your favorite is Illustrated. Use it almost every day. Yep. Illustrator is a popular one here. Okay. I'm thinking about, I'm going to try something like sneakers, something like made with a marker, something like that. Let's try this one. Take a look. And then yeah, this kind get... of like hand done type is really. That's right. I feel like will work really well for this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try the work. Festival, uppercase, and festival, and upper and lowercase, and festival, all uppercase. And I think it looks nice. It's kids alike, at least. So when you look for typefaces at font.adobe.com, you have different ways of looking for typefaces. I'm just moving fast because I want to get in time with everything. So we have a question from Voodoo Val. She says, Chris, what sorts of things are you keeping in mind when hunting for the right font? Keywords. That's what I was going to use, keywords. So at the beginning, it depends. So if I already know what I'm looking for, I'm just looking for, okay, I'm looking for a sans serif or a geometrical typeface or serif font. Um, then I just work in the different variations. Then the other way is just using... In this case, it's something more childish and that gives you a lot of freedom. You just play with some keywords and see if you have something. Um, but that's work actually more in image banks, I'm thinking. It is more about the style. I'm looking for markers, so I'm going to type marker. Potentially going to get something. 
yep, I have more like markers. So I activated one, I activated this one. No, I choose festival for now, festival, sorry. Uh, sneaker, I'm gonna try this one. Let's choose another one. So actually we are open to suggestions to everyone. Yeah, so this if is... we've got people in the chat who have cool font suggestions for us, mm -hmm. put them out there for us. Maybe something related to sign painting, sign painting. And um, let's see, Annika is reminding us that there's also the recommendations feature on the bottom. I also really like the font packs feature. So those are great. They've got like packs for that are great for branding. There are packs that are great for like protest signs. And so they all collect these kind of like-minded fonts all together. So that'd be a yeah. good, great place to look. Sneaker. And sneaker looks nice. Sneaker does look good. Let's see if you have any special. No, it's just, it is what it is. We don't have any special sign. David from Los Gatos, California. Hello, David. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We, um, I have some friends in Los Gatos, so I've spent a good amount of time in Los Gatos over the years. It's a very beautiful city, so we're happy to have you here. It's working well. I like it somehow. Let's try something else. Then we're going to talk about alignment. Um, I'm going to try this one. It looks playful. We have different variation. This is good. And we have this. That's interesting. This is going to be useful. Uh -huh. That's a cool one. Activate them all. <laughs> I, that's, I mean, when in doubt, I just activate every single one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I forgot the name. Okay, CC Signs. CC Signs. You can see once you activate it on the web page, it goes there immediately. That's nice too. Yep. Um, Randall says, hi, everyone. Welcome back. Excited for part two. We're happy to have you here, Randall. Thank you for coming back. Um, just a reminder, because we did have some people pop over from YouTube. If you're watching from YouTube, come over to behancebe.net slash Adobe Live and join us in the chat here. Um, we would love to hear from you. And Voodoo Val, thank you so much for sharing um, sharing Valentina. I think it was Valentina's work. Yeah, yep. Valentina's um, type work. Thank you for putting those links out there. So if anyone wants to check out, Chris says Valentina is an amazing type designer. So you guys should check out the two links that Voodoo Val just dropped in of hers. Rizwan, hello, hello, welcome. Where are you tuning in from? I really like this one. I'm gonna choose this one. Let's go with this one. Let's move forward. Yeah, Voodoo Val says, I love that last font with jump a lot. So we've yeah. got some, we're in agreement here. Getting messing. So I, I'm using shortcuts all the time. Uh, right now I just click and comment T and I got the type face or characters uh, tool. Do you call it tools, right? Mm, yeah, I think so. Window? Window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Window, pop in, window. Okay, let's talk about alignment. These two are totally aligned, talking, mechanically talking, but they don't look centered, right? It looks like yeah. jump is going to the right, slightly to the right. So you need to use your eye and take the decision in that way. Not trust on this tool all the time because for typeface, it doesn't work this way. What is happening here is that we have a lot of blank space in this area, mm -hmm. right? And here's really busy. It's totally busy, but here's so soft and a lot of blank space. So it means that obviously it's gonna be heavier at the right rather than the left. So we're gonna trick this up a little bit and now it looks better. Yeah. And it's not technically center, but it's visually centered now. So I think that's our load type. Let's see colors now. We're gonna choose one color for the load type or maybe we can keep just the yellow and how it works that Same. i mean i'm loving this yellow the yellow works really well 
So I love colors. Actually, I'm gonna show a book. I'm work with this book a lot. It's from Eva Heller. Oh, Psychology of Color. It's in Spanish. It's about the concept and all the things that happen in our brains about colors. Why the red is red for our brains? Why the red is used by Coca-Cola or those massive brands on the shelves? And how is the interpretation of colors? For example, in the red, it's a really aggressive color. And why it's aggressive? Why we feel that red is aggressive? Because it's sexy too, but it's aggressive at the same time. And there's a lot of story in the human civilization stories. So, for example, the red, the red is aggressive because it's related to blood. And when you see blood, it's not a happy thing, right? So you don't feel comfortable about that color because it connects you on the unconscious all the time with, okay, that's blood, it's aggressive, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So then yellow, yellow is the color of the sun. It's happiness, it's energy. It's so related to positive things. And the green, green, what it is green? Nature, because the trees, um, you don't think about it all the time. It is just part of our mind every single day. And, and this is something you need to think about it when you choose colors as well for communication, because you want an action from, from the viewer, from whoever is looking for that product or that service or that communication asset. So yeah. colors is really important um, on the psychology side. So I'm using this, this book a lot. So you or, said there's a book called The Psychology of Color. Is that right? The Psychology of Color. Okay, cool. And I, I, you said it's in Spanish. I wonder if there's like an English translation out there. It is. Um, it is not. Uh, actually, I think the, the author is from Germany, Eva, Eva Heller. Cool. Yeah, so if anyone in the chat is curious I, about that book, Psychology of Color, there's, like Chris was saying, there's so much to the psychology of color and color theory. I mean why we see McDonald's with the red and the yellow, like there's science to back up the fact that those two colors together can make us really hungry or, you know, seeing red, someone, um, Christine in the chat says seeing red equals being angry. And so there's a lot of emotions tied to different colors and they make us as consumers act in different ways. I mean, if you think about like green in the context of a hospital, green feels really medicinal. You kind of are imagining something sort of sterile. You're imagining maybe more pale green or blue, like for an insurance company, like these colors convey really specific meanings in specific contexts. And so it's good as designers to understand what those contexts and meanings are. I can change, now I'm testing the color in different backgrounds, right? And the black's gonna be tricky. So let's see what we can do with this. And I'm gonna show you, for example, I'm getting into this group. Right now, this is a whole group. I already changed this to plain white. I'm gonna get there and I wanna change all the black. So I'm gonna choose just one, but not one. I'm gonna use the direct selection tool rather than the selection tool and the direct one just allows you to choose one single node or just one single element on that group. So I'm gonna choose one of the black objects mm -hmm. and I go to select, same, and I wanna select everything which is filled with black. So I'm gonna use this rule, fill with color. You can choose using all these things. Everything that it's got the same opacity because you wanna change opacity, you choose this option if you wanna grab everything that is using the same stroke color or the stroke weight, you have the option. In this case, I'm gonna use fill color. So I'm gonna click here and I have all the black. Look at this, I'm gonna delete it, put this back. Awesome. And the solution, oh, the solution is what's happen if I choose white? It's interesting, but maybe it's not what I'm looking for, right? Such a simple color change just completely changes the vibe. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to look, we're going to do the same, same field color. And I'm going to use another shade of potentially something even closer to red. And let's see how it works. It's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. It's not easy and negative. 
or reversed. Hmm, we got in trouble. Or we can give uh, a rule for the guidance, like don't use this logo type on bl over black <laughs> and you solve the problem. Yep. <laughs> and you just give the problems to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's great. So when you're, when you're, when your brand is complete, when you're passing it out to different like designers, junior designers or interns who are going to be expanding the brand on your team, huh. it's good to have these brand guidelines set up so that you can tell them, you know, this works and this definitely doesn't work. You yep. can't put this over white. You can't put this outline in black, you know, so these are all really important things to experiment with so that you have some rules for your brand. Mm. Um, Voodoo Val, really? thank you for dropping the link to this book to the Psychology of Color in the chat for us. So if anyone's interested in checking that out. Black won't work at all. Oh, what are you? Okay, you're going to do one more attempt, then we're going to move forward. Yeah, I think it doesn't work in black in this case. So we can avoid. Anyway, this is for kids. You don't want to use black anywhere so it makes sense somehow we have the load type this is our final load type and we have the idea which came from one of the guys from the chat i don't remember who they said okay the icon for social media remember yes the j and the exclamation point mm -hmm. that's awesome we got it. And it looks like. So for people in the chat, so we had a question of if this is a one or two hour stream. So thanks for confirming that you guys, this is indeed a two hour stream. And this is part two of a live stream that we started yesterday. Um, and so we would love it if once this stream wraps up, you guys could go check out um, part one if you haven't seen it yet um, to see how we got to this place. Um, I also want to say that we have a very cool artist spotlight um, about an hour and a half into the show. So around 1.30, we're going to be doing an artist spotlight on Behance. And so you guys want to stick around for that. Um, and we also want you guys to suggest other artists or other designers that you might recommend for future artist spotlights. So keep in mind, if you guys have any favorite um, artists on Behance that you'd like to recommend for the artist spotlight um, in the future, um, let us know and we would love to hear them and maybe we can get them featured on a future live stream. Hey, let's start working with colors. Uh, we're gonna go with this yellow. What I like from this yellow is that it's a little bit orangish. Actually, you can see it here. When you add this orangish feeling or adding a little bit of, of red, you're helping a lot with the contrast. It's gonna work nicely on white. You can see this is different than just going to a totally yellow yeah, when you yeah. have a lack of contrast. But in this case, it looks like yellow. We are calling it actually yellow, but actually it's a light orange. So let's go with orange. Talking about psychology of color, the orange have really great concept from red and really great concept from yellow. Yellow is a color for happiness and joy. And the red is a color of action, which means like you have that combination. This is activity. This is proactive. This is energy. This is so powerful. It's just as powerful as the sun. This is the idea of this color. This is why it's going to work well on this low type jump for kids. So what I'm going to do now is just exploring options. I'm going to choose my yellow. I'm going to grab the hex code in this case. The hex code you don't have everywhere. You just have it on the RGB color uh, tool. But if you go to the grayscale, you don't have it. If you go to HSB, hue, saturation, and black, uh, you don't have it. You don't have it anywhere. Just in WebSafe RGB and RGB. So, so I copy. It really easy yep. to copy and paste the color over to somewhere else. Uh -huh. I copied from here. 
and then go to color.adobe.com. And I'm gonna work on the middle. And I'm gonna paste that hex code here. And I'm gonna have results now. First of all, we're gonna explore analogous system. Analogous is about having the same distance between each color. If I move this one, you can see they're using exactly the same color. And as a result, you have something which looks nice to the eye. What you can modify on this system are the saturation. So you're totally free to modify the saturation. Mm -hmm. You have the brightness and you have RGB. If I modify any of the colors that of, of this one, of, uh, of the component of this color, it's gonna change this color. You can see, I'm gonna modify this. Oh, it is not actually, it should be, oh, it's changing the, the, the opacity, the opacity, the saturation. Should hmm. be, it's just the same as, um, okay, Never mind. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of, it seems to adjust them just slightly. Yeah, but. So you can modify here. You can go to lighter. And you can see the one in the center is always in the same place. And you choose, to be honest, in some cases, just what looks nice for you. Mm -hmm. Because on theory, on the theory of this, the same distance helps to make things more cohesive and nice to the eye it make it have sense it have a lot of logic you know and you just choose and you, you play with this depending on what you're looking for gall says the last time he used adobe color was when he was a student so oh, yeah. that's this is a great reminder for you guys to check out adobe color and um Something that I really love about Adobe Color is that you can extract themes from photographs or from um, other graphics that you've done. And so like if you've got a photograph of some flowers and you really love all the colors in this photograph, then you can actually drop it into Adobe Color and it'll pull out different color themes for you. Um, so that's a tool that I use a lot and it's super helpful. And then from there, and I think what you just did, Chris, is that you just added this to your Creative Crowd library and so that it populates over into Adobe Illustrator, right? Isn't that what you just did? Yep. Cool. And now I'm exploring different theories and different methods. Now I use analogous, I'm sorry, I did something and I didn't mention that. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna work on a monochromatic. I don't wanna work on monochromatic actually because I don't wanna play with it, with a yellow with that way because we're gonna have those mustards. And the theory is working just in the same hue, modifying the shade, but getting to darker rather than lighter. And triad is working on the triangle. You have complementary, which is the totally opposite of it. Mm -hmm. And then you have different situations and the split, double split, and those are more complicated, but you can have really nice combinations. You can this, this is a square. Actually, this is looking nice. Oh, but you have this yellow because this work only for two, for four color shades. Yeah, but this is and Compounds nice. is more like you play with this. The the square was cool because it kind of felt very um, primary or maybe it wasn't square. Squid, double split, complementary. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that one I like a lot because it's got those really bright primary colors. It kind of reminds me of kids. Yeah, if you want to go primary, you go to try it. So there are three primary color. Oh, but this is C, M, Y, K. So no, you won't get the same as the kids. So I will go with analogous. I really love to work with this one because you have, you can see, you have a lot of color, different colors. You have the blue, green, yellow, red, and purple. And then we can mess this up a little bit. So. Yeah, just tweak them ever so slightly. Yeah, and see. So I like the grass green, something like that, or apple-ish, a little bit like mm -hmm. an apple. This red is too much, maybe more pastel red. Somewhere there, and yeah, the purple nice. is tricky. I like deep purple, deep purple. Oh, I'm excited this. to see how these go like flush out into the system too. Uh -huh. uh, 
this is looking nice. And I'm gonna save it to, I create before on libraries, I call it jump and I save it in jump and I already save one color system, right? One color palette before. I'm gonna save a second one. I add a name, I save to one of these. I am using just jump or I just create a new library. And when I save it, save this one, saving and now should appears here voila um, you just have like it that on. yeah just like that and let's yeah, play with it that is super cool so you guys if you haven't used adobe color to explore color palettes before or to extract mm -hmm. colors from photographs or um, different pieces of inspiration you should definitely, and then sync it up into your Adobe Creative Cloud library, and then it'll pop on over to Illustrator for you. That uh, way you don't need to take the time to copy and paste the hex codes or copy and paste the colors over. You've just got it all right there really quickly for you. Okay, it's time. So I explore briefly, really briefly about color. I have a couple of books I love to take a look. Some are about fashion, some about psychology, some about theory of color. It's really nice to get into color. I love color as well as typography. Those are my favorite topics. Currently on Glorious, we are getting this keyboard with different color systems. Super cool. This is one. This is a green. We have a blue. Nice. Uh, and this is the branded one. Oh, which is a really heavy keyboard. Whoa, missing one. This is using our golden gold, golden orange color. And on the other side, we have a lettering I made for this special edition of the keyboard. Wow, man, I and want this, that keyboard. <laughs> this is Russ over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> this is my baby. Oh, okay. Oh. It's heavy, it's four kilograms. That keyboard is five kilograms. I mean, that just, I, I like a really <laughs> cool, like heavyweight, like product like that though. That uh, feels really nice. Oh, it's it's really heavy. I love it. Okay, uh, let's start working on the lineup now. So I'm gonna use my iPad. I'm gonna do a sketch uh, really fast, pretty simple, okay. just for having an idea of which kind of content we need on we need on the lineup. Uh, let me share my iPad. Here we and go. we have um, Toinette asking how we sync Adobe Color. And so that should be pretty simple. As long as you're logged into your Adobe um, Creative Cloud subscription on your desktop program, and then you're logged in on Adobe Color, um, you shouldn't have any trouble syncing it up. It worked just now for Chris, super quick and easy. As soon as he saved it and added it to his library, it popped right on over. Um, and so just make sure you're logged in on both things. Um, and you're getting a lot of love for your keyboards right now, Chris. Um, Gal says, nice. Nice, really uh, love the keyboard. Caroline says, nice keyboards. Budabel says, wow. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful hobby. The keyboards, mechanical keyboards. And I highly recommend everyone to go to Glorious, pcgaming.com. And you can see all the things that I'm doing with my team. And you're gonna find a lot of color stuff and outstanding mechanical keyboards. So the lineup, this work on the lineup. I am used to start working when I work on a lineup on a vertical, on a vertical uh, layout because you're used to print posters with a mm -hmm. lineup a lot. So that's gonna be the first. And that's how, I don't know, the producers or the festival owners feel more familiar with that format. Like, okay, vertical before anything else. And okay, we, we have the logo type. It's obviously need to be a head hitter at the top. So we have, it is jump. Huh. But it's like what we were talking about yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Just... Um, so for anyone who might be just tuning in right now, we are working on some branding for a children's music festival. Um, and so Chris has spent um, the earlier part of this live stream finalizing the Jump logo. So the festival is called Jump um, and it's for 
kids under the age of 18. Um, and right now he's doing a quick sketch to for the lineup poster. And so um, for like a music festival for lineup posters, they've got um, the lineup of every single artist who's gonna be showing at the music festival. And what he's doing right now, you know, so you have to have the date on the lineup festival and you start with some of the most popular artists and then you'd list down um, sort of in descending order to like some of maybe the more like indie or less known artists. Um, but it's a pretty, pretty integral part of every music festival to have some kind of lineup so that you can attract people to your music festival and get someone to recognize some of the big names that they might want to buy tickets for. So it'll be really cool to see as this comes to life. Um, if so, we have anyone in the chat who has fun recommendations for artists, maybe that they would want to see at this music festival, that would be really cool. Um, we can use the your names. We can put your names into the yeah. lineup. If y'all want to be featured at this music festival, um, we would love to have you at this music festival. I would buy tickets to go and hang out with all of you guys. Um, but put in some recommendations for artists that you think might be great at a children's or at a teenager's um, music festival. I think, Chris, we had talked to maybe about having like Ariana Grande there. I know your kids like mm -hmm. Ariana Grande, maybe some Harry Styles. Um, maybe there'd be like a stage for like kids who are under the age of 10 and we could have like the Wiggles there or something. Um, yeah, actually, <laughs> I don't know. I you you gave a great idea about using sparkling uh confettis so we can use confettis and create confettis for for this lineup that would be a great um that would make for some like really nice design elements mm -hmm. um voodoo val says she wants to be featured all right voodoo val i think you're gonna probably be one of our headliners um your name's gonna Why be right there up at the top yeah. <laughs> over ariana grande <laughs> Over our, oh my gosh, yes. Okay, well, now we have to do it. Voodoo Val is the headliner. Um, and also, Voodoo Val was asking the name of the gaming site that you recommended or the gaming company that you work for. Can you say that again for us? Yes, Glorious and the company, the website is gloriouspcgaming.com. Glorious can, PC sorry. Gaming. And so that's where you're working. Um, after having done, I don't know, you said 11 years of freelance, you're now working for Glorious Games <laughs> yeah, full time, right? Yeah, after a year, already a year working just for Glorious. Yeah, guys, check out their products. I mean, Chris has designed and some really cool keyboards for them. And I'm enjoying it so bad, learning about the gaming industry. And it's such a wonderful world, even more in the keyboard. I got so passionate about the mechanical keyboards because you can find a lot of creativity and different people adding a lot of creativity around the world no kidding i'm calling it the new sneakers uh the new sneakers uh, hype today like everybody goes crazy for the keyboards and they're collectible they're collecting keyboards it's yeah awesome. there's i mean i do I, it's kind of funny related to the sneaker hype because it is it does feel like people a lot of people i know are creating their own custom keyboards um there's a guy that I follow on Instagram. I'm trying to remember the name who lives here in Portland who makes some really, really cool custom keyboards as well. Um, okay, we have some other recommendations. We have Marco who says BTS. I think they would bring some really awesome energy. Um, yeah, to the kids. That's a good one. BTS is a good one. All I can make notes of these, Chris, so that we can add them in once you start um, moving this over. Um, Mauricio says, yo, Gabba Gabba. That's a really great one. Um, Marco yo, says, Gabba Gabba. <laughs> uh-huh. Jojo Siwa is also really great. Um, love Jojo Siwa. I know kids love Jojo Siwa. Um, the Polyphonic Spree. Alejandro says the Polyphonic Spree. I haven't heard of them, but Dream we could add them. Magic. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you need to sing more for us. We liked it so much last time. I have a guitar next time. <laughs> okay. Well, that's how we're going to, we're going to shift up our intro next time. And we're going to expect you to play a song on your guitar when we do an intro. For sure. A song okay. for a double life. Oh, yes. Maybe that could be our <laughs> outro today if we have time. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to Illustrator now. We have a plan. I'm just printing it for taking a look. And let me share. Okay, I got it. Here we go. So I just imported to Illustrator directly from Fresco, which is 
Beautiful. I love that feature. So we have the pen. Let's create a document more accurate. We can work in A4. I think that's good enough. I'm going to work in RGB just because we are working RGB colors. Um, oh, but not landscape. I want it. Um, and we have a really great question from Annika. Um, Annika asks you, Chris, how do you incorporate color accessibility into your work? And do you have any tips for us? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, there are a few websites and I'm used to, thanks printer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a couple of websites that allows you to check if those colors are blind friendly. So blind color friendly, I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, actually, I'm not sure if Adobe got it. I don't remember where, but I'm used, yeah, accessibility tools. You have it on Adobe, that's the one. So, and you can test if those color system looks differently in that color palette. Oh, that's super. I didn't realize that there was an accessibility mm -hmm. tools in Adobe Color, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I was using that actually. Uh, I'm building up a new color system, a huge one. Uh, and we were working using this tool a lot because we need actually take care of this point, which yep. is totally necessary and really important. So thanks for coming up with this topic. Yeah, um, Annika, that was a great question. I mean, color accessibility, I think accessibility as a whole. So I went to design school for five years and accessibility wasn't, didn't feel like it was a huge topic of conversation, something that I needed to kind of learn about on the job. Um, and, you know, I had to kind of learn by messing up sometimes. And so it's a really great thing for designers to be aware of, especially any like visibility, accessibility requirements that someone might have, like color blindness um, is especially a big one, or if someone's using a screen reader, making sure that you're adding alt text to like website images, even you can add alt text to your Instagram posts. Um, so that's a really great tool on Adobe Color to be aware of that there is accessibility checkers to see how your different colors in your palette stack up against each other in terms of contrast because someone who has trouble seeing red, for instance, might not be able to differentiate between a really orangey yellow and a really orangey red. And so if you wanna make sure that your design is accessible, you wanna test the colors that you're using um, to make sure that they're visible for anyone who's viewing it. Um, and there's another great resource that I've used before. It's called webaim.org um, that I just dropped into the chat that hopefully comes through um, that I've used a lot for checking accessibility and making sure that colors work well together. Um, and then Alejandro or Alejandro says there's also view modes in Illustrator for colorblind checking. I oh I've never, I didn't know that. Yeah, I've never used those before, but that's a really great thing to look into. Um, so thank you for sharing that with us. Is that a plugin or is it um, native to Illustrator, Alejandra? Yeah, I never heard about it. So, okay, you can see it. The secondary typeface we use for festival, it won't work for, I choose Bay Area Discovery Museum. I love Bay Area Discovery Museum, which is in South Salida, she's crossing the Golden Gate Bridge and the view is standing and all activities for kids, it's beautiful and they have plenty of play of room for making a festival. So I choose Bay Area Discovery Museum. I highly recommend if you're in the area and you have kids, just go and hang out there for a couple of hours. It's so nice. Yeah, that place is amazing. So I'm gonna choose a typography for text. Now, not really fancy, just for this kind of information that on hierarchy, they're really small, but at the end they're really important because that's the date and the venue or the location for the event. So we're gonna choose one. Let's go with Ariel. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you lost me on that one. <laughs> Comic sense for this typeface. Um, no, let's see. I'm used to work always with the same typefaces. Um, this is a new computer and I didn't install them all. Maybe let's try it. Museum, talking about museum. This is a really nice typeface. It's clear, but we don't have a background, but you have 
color system. Let's choose one. Let's well, start it's good with to pick little... those colors out beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, Alejandro yep. says that the accessibility um, checker is native to, or accessibility view mode in Illustrator is mm -hmm. native to Illustrator. And if you go into view and then proof setup, um, that's how you can use that tool. So that's really good to know. Thank you for sharing that, Alejandra. Look at that. It's looking nice. Um, Voodoo Val thinks that's a great question. So what, does anyone have any favorite Adobe XD plugins that they like to use? Um, one that I have used before that's really cool and I'm blanking on the name of, um, it's one that you can use to check to see um, it will, it will use AI on your design to see where based on like testing, um, the human eye goes to first in a design. So like where the automatic hierarchy is of a design, it'll use AI to sort of detect where someone's eye might go to first in a design. Um, and you can use that plugin to like, if you're creating mockups for a, a packaging project, um, you can use that um, and it'll populate it into like a shelving unit for you. And then it'll tell you where the human eye is most likely to go on your design. And you can test to see how it stacks up against other products on the shelf. Um, that one is really handy. And I, I will try to remember the name or look it up um, for you guys. Okay. We have colors. It's looking nice. The lineups are great when you use some framing. That helps a lot. It gives a lot of style. Let's create a frame. Just random. Now I want this. That's going to be the interior. This is going to be a frame. I'm going to create a rectangle over it. I'm gonna see, oh, this is something I'm used to use too often. I'm gonna get access to the rest of the thing, right? Because I just made this huge rectangle over it. Mm -hmm. I use common Y and I see all the outlines. Yes, I love command Y. Yeah, and then I'm gonna grab everything else. Shift, common, um, you get everything to the top using this, oh, in English, uh, brackets. Come and shift bracket, and you're gonna get at the top. Take a look, got it there. And then I'm gonna take this the opening bracket, and the black is going to the background. And I have this. Sorry, I'm working on black, and that's making sense. Oh, this is the color system I'm using. I want to make this transparent, so eight. I want this using this beautiful color. Flashing energy. Is that energy? Look at that. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. The purple is totally the, the opposite of yellow, actually. Fun. Maybe it's too much. I don't know yet. Uh, maybe blue. Oh, that's better. Maybe blue on the background. Okay. I, I really like this green somehow. Yeah, me too. Especially for a music festival, there's some, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I, I think of like people sitting on the green grass and I just think green feels like it works really nicely. Uduval. The headliner. <laughs> Uduval headlining, as usual. Um, and so just a little reminder for everyone in the chat, we have an artist spotlight happening in about 20 minutes at 1.30. Um, and so we're going to be switching over to my screen and I will show you guys, we'll walk through um, one of our fantastic um, Behance graphic designers. Um, and so if anyone in the chat has any other artists that they would like to recommend for Spotlight, we would love to hear that from you guys um, and give, you know, one of your fellow designers an opportunity to be featured on an Adobe live stream in the future. Um, if we've got anyone watching over in YouTube, you should head over to our Behance website. It's be.net slash Adobe Live. And that way you can participate in the chat. Oh, there I am. Oh, yay. <laughs> I'm on the lineup. Oh, You're this just lineup. made my life. Okay. Um, you should be Voodoo Ball first, then oh, you. Oh, my God. I'm honored. Yes. This is making my life. Um, 
but yes, if you're watching over on YouTube, please head on over to Behance so you can participate in the chat. Um, give us recommendations of other artists who could be featured in our lineup. Ask Chris questions about his design process. Um, tell us about your favorite Adobe products and stick around for the artist spotlight in about 20 minutes. <laughs> as much as I see in, in the chat. Um, okay, you should definitely feature um, Annika. Annika has been an OG since like minute one of the live stream <laughs> yesterday. We need Annika <laughs> to be in there. Um, Annika Agarwal. Oh, with two Gs. Oh, it's two Gs. There we go. It's a great um, name. She deserves being there. <laughs> That's a good uh, point, actually. That this is a nice, a, a nice point talking about lineups. You have different kind of lineups because the lineups are used to hard egos, you know. So because you you manage ton of artists. Most many times you have different lineups when they don't have really huge headliners and mm -hmm. they sort all the names alphabetically. So there's no harsh, nobody get hard and everything is well organized alphabetically talking. But then you have other situations, the more typical ones, because if you have Lady Gaga as a headliner, for saying one name or uh -huh. the Rolling Stones, you don't you want them at the top and yeah. as big as possible. So those two are the two different kind of criteria for the lineups. So that's what's great. Like I just moved someone and probably I heard the feeling of someone else. So <laughs> yeah. and then you have on the production side the artist the, the, the artist itself sometimes or the managers calling you like saying hey no uh, Corey Hall is more important than Budaval. And then you have Budaval manager calling you back like, no, how, no, we we don't want to go into your festival because we are more important than Corey Ball. <laughs> <laughs> we have Corey um, Annika in the chat who says, I got bumped. So now, Annika, <laughs> you need to have your agent call Chris and be like, why are you putting me lower on the poster than Ariana Grande? Because you are more famous than Ariana Grande. Um, okay, Caitlin Dooley, she wants to be on the lineup. Can we add Caitlin? Real, why do you say you have no feelings? You're on the you're on the lineup. You're up there too. Like you're very important to us. I this gotta is... add my kids. Oh, you gotta add your kids to this. I mean, I would understand if you put your kids above me on this lineup. I won't have <laughs> my feelings will not get hurt. <laughs> Um, Voodoo Val says at Jump Fest, um, I'll be performing an abstract array of freelance raps focused on shedding light on the struggles of being a baby who is teething. I will also do the worm for 20 minutes straight. All right. That is why you're the headliner, Voodoo Val, is because you're bringing us the content that we want to see. <laughs> Here. And then Paco said live stream by Paco. I feel like it's only fair that we put Paco on this because he is the man behind the scenes making it all happen. Thank you so much, Paco, for being here for us. I have an issue. I am doing the space between lines by myself <laughs> because I'm using different size for the typeface. Um, I have some limitations right now. We we created a bit of a snake eating its own tail here because now Matt McRae says now I'm at the bottom. Rude. Yeah, but huge, huge. You're still pretty big down there, Matt. And you know what? Like the thing is, is it's like where you are in the lineup is not a value judgment, right? It's just it's really just about what type of artist you know you are. You know, Voodoo Val is bringing us some really cool stage content. Maybe you're a little bit more of an indie artist. You've got your fans who are going to be showing up for you. He says Ariana Grande should go below him. I mean, you know I don't what? make the rules here. She's the less important person in this list. You know, I think you're right. And actually even worse for Ariana Grande. We really love Ariana Grande. Plus more. <laughs> <laughs> even she, doesn't even, she doesn't even get her own line. She's like Ariana Grande and some other people too. And some others. <laughs> Okay, Matt, you got your wish. You got so, Ariana Grande below you. You can see 
this is already something nice and we are using just a few elements, which is colors. This is just already looking nice because we have a lot of colors around. It's already busy and that's the word. It's already busy artwork. So you, we can add more stuff around, but if we want to launch this just like that, it's going to look fine. Look at this. It's a nice poster. Mm -hmm. And if I remove this, this is looking gorgeous. The typeface is so much, it's too much already, and the colors are too much, so that's good enough. But we're gonna use the logo type and the venue. Maybe in this, we have the URL. Nobody uses triple W anymore, so don't use it. Don't waste yeah, time with it. We all know it's www. Uh, oh, jumpfestival.com. It's a little boring. That typeface is a little boring. No, oh, Voodoo Vow says Ariana has been voted off the island. <laughs> okay, Ariana has enough attention, right? I think she understands. She will understand. She's between us anyway. Look at that. Then social media. If your social media is just using the same as the name, like, I don't know, Instagram, your Instagram users, Jump Festival, you want to add just the icon and jump festival nobody used that festival so imagine that you have the icons i should have the icons already but sorry about it do you want to use that today mm -hmm. you're going to remove this and you're going to keep the instagram icon instagram facebook and whichever social media the festival is using if they're using just the same name if the jam festival is not using the same name on social media, yeah, you need to mention them on yeah on everywhere. So we're gonna totally. have the social media icons here. Imagine them up here. Marco Flores is asking any tips for making sure the design as a whole is visually balanced. What do you mean? I think, I mean, the question might be around like how the elements are balancing out or maybe really it's just as a whole, how how are we balancing the different colors versus the elements versus the visual hierarchy? Yeah, talking about hierarchy and thing, I, I didn't draw this and then I just came up on this layout out of the blue, but the logic about this layout is about the hierarchy. So you can see the headliners and Eric Sue. <laughs> because his name is so short and <laughs> yeah. he got so big in the middle of, of the lineup and it's big and, and, and it's awesome. So I work in this layout. The tension and the tension, the tension means like the tension is just in the center right now. It was intentional, to be honest. So you have the, the tension here. This is the main layout. Then everything is center here in the middle right this is mm -hmm. this is kind of the the guides the main guides i'm following this rule and then whatever happens around this is going to be decorative i'm thinking about adding those sparkling um uh, oh confettis all the confettis wrong yeah so, but you have all in the tension here. The original idea was to keep the URL here, everything in the center, right? This is a basic layout and it's totally fine. Actually, the URL is used to be at the top. In some cases you have some uh, sponsors and on the sponsor side, I always recommend to start working just with a white, background yeah de depending of depending of the size of the festival and the sponsors if the sponsor is going to be he a big brand you you know that you're going to get all the vectors side the, the, the vector load type load type in vectors in vector files but if you don't have really big brands you're going to receive jpegs and pngs 
with oh. wide background. That um, is the worst. Adding the sponsors at the bottom of any poster <laughs> is like such a nightmare because all the logos, you have to figure out how to make them fit together. That's never balanced. It always mm -hmm. feels like it does not look good unless you've got like really big names and then you've got high quality black and white or like grayscale logos and then you can kind of make it work. Gonna be nice in different colors. Oh, I'm loving the colors. Sorry. So this is the layout. This is what I'm following now. Then you can play and break this, but you need to start from something. You cannot start from nowhere. This is why I start from this thing and then I just split this into part. Got it? But I start from a structure, from a skeleton, and then you just modify slightly to be sure that you are not messing with everything so nice. let's this that purple. that kind of helps to answer marco's question because he followed up and he said hierarchy individual elements do you use grids and so that's kind of what you're talking about here is you've got this sort of gridded system mm -hmm. that you're working off of on the right where you had everything sort of centered and you had your uh, like where the information is going to be sectioned off into mm -hmm. that's awesome oh. We have the skeleton. I'm thinking about actually, okay, I add this to the corners, right? And what if I add the date? Made and story. Voodoo Val is reminding us um, 10 minutes until the viewer spotlight. So everyone who's tuned in right now, make sure you stick around for that. We're going to be highlighting um, someone named Suzanne in Dubai. And um, that's going to be happening in about 10 minutes. Um, and if you, anyone watching in the chat would like to um, nominate yourself for another artist, you can click the artist spotlight little section above the chat area. Um, and that's on our Behance page. So if we've got anyone tuning in from YouTube, you should head over to be.net slash Adobe Live. Um, and that way you can participate in the chat that we've got going on as well as nominate yourself or other Behance artists for future um, opportunities to be spotlighted on an Adobe live stream. Uh, so now that, I'm going to create some minutes. confettis. Yeah, so we're running out of time. So I'm going to move fast and create some confettis around. And for those, as we're going to be creating many confettis, I create a new layer on Illustrator. So I can activate it and deactivate it anytime. And it's going to be easier for grab them up if I need it modify. Actually, I have this one on the wrong layer. So I click on it. And then you can see in the layers menu or window that you have this little square, which is the actual color of the guides. Mm -hmm. You grab it with your mice and you move it to the top or to the other layer. And oh, voila, it's whoa. in confetti now. <gasps> oh my God, I didn't know you could do that. That's so cool. And there's something else. So again, I'm here and I want uh -huh. to duplicate it to the other layer. So you click on option. And the same, you move it. You can see the, the plus sign yeah. appears just beside, and it's copied. If I hide this one, it's still there. What? I don't want to, yep, oh my go. God, there. That's that makes it so much easier. Yep. I was like always opening up a layer <laughs> and then finding the particular element and then dragging it up to the next layer. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned some really practical things today. Thank you, Chris. No problem, my pleasure. This is why I'm here. For sharing some of my my things sharing that critical knowledge um so f just five ish more minutes until 1 30 and then we're going to pop on over to my screen to do the yeah, artist boy. spotlight um and then we have a couple people we're just reminding um our viewers we talked about a really great um color theory book um, the psychology of color that chris uses a lot um so if anyone is curious about that check that out um thank you for reminding us of that Annika and Voodoo Val. Marco says great tips um well in regards to that question that he had about the hierarchy of design and creating yeah. a system. And Annika is asking nice we can even use the repeat grids to make the confetti right could be fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm grabbing the same as I did with the layers. I'm just clicking on one element, clicking an option, and just moving. You see how the cursor changed, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this confetti is looking really good. It adds some nice dimensionality to the poster. Yep. So I can wrap this anyway later. I'm going to share it on Instagram. Uh, yeah, so that's a great reminder. So um, Chris will share some of his work on Instagram. You can follow him on Instagram at, at Chris Bernay. Um, and also make sure that you check out his website. It should be beneath the live stream video on Behance. Um, it's right there linked at the bottom. Well, actually it's his Behance, behance.net slash Chris Bernay. Uh, make sure you check him out on Instagram as well. Um, you can follow me, Portland graphic designers, especially hit me up on Instagram. Um, I am at Corey Allen Hall on Instagram. Um, everyone in the chat, it would be really great to see you guys over there. Um, send me a DM, send Chris a DM if you have any questions. Um, if you want to be added to his lineup when he adds it to his Instagram, you should send him a message and give him a follow. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. So what I'm doing now is just playing with the color. So we were so focused on color. And now I'm going to duplicate the artboard. So I this leg, I unlock every single layer. I choose artboard tool from here and I choose which one and the same option. And you can see you can duplicate the whole thing to the side. Love that. Yeah. And same, we're going to play with the colors. This is going to be like this. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to give it. So time. this is great because then you can really easily just transfer everything over. You've already got your color palettes figured out. And so it makes for some really quick iterations of um, of trying out a bunch of different color palettes, making a bunch of different versions for a, a whole lot of different options. Um, and then Caitlin in the chat, so she says, Christian Stoll has a really great post based on the psychology of color here on Behance. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. That's That sounds like it would be a great resource um, awesome. to check out. Voodoo Val just dropped um, our links and our socials into the chat. Oh, she says, Corey's Instagram is fire. Thank you, Voodoo Val. Man, I just, uh, I've said this to you before, but I just feel like I know you. We're like Sacramento mm -hmm. souls together. <laughs> um, you're just so cool. Um, Gall says, looking good so far. Give me the vibe Instagram to is really awesome. jump. Colby's Clydes, how's it going, man? Happy to see you back here. Welcome, Colby. Thank you for joining us. Matt says, looks great. Cool, so sweet. we have it. We have a lineup, colorful lineup for kids. Jump. Oh, so we have just one minute, right? Two minutes. I have two, two minutes, minutes for, until this for, spotlight. For messing this up a little bit more. Let's yeah, and so feel free it. if you want to like do a little bit of designing in the background while I'm doing my artist spotlight. Um, just like pitch in a little um, to this. Feel free to. This looks. I'm really loving this logo. This logo is just really amazing. I'm gonna do something even crazy. So I don't need this for now. I'm gonna need. Love a type, huge love a type. Uriel says, "Secret language of color and interaction of color are his two favorite color books." That's really good to know. Thank you. Um, Colby says, "Hey, Chris, good to see you too." Hey, what's up? Marion says, "Muy bueno." Muy Viola bueno. says, "The logo is great." Okay. So look, um, at, look at this poster. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> that's fun. Oh, I love this layout, actually. I that's, prefer this layout. That's great, too, to kind of have some different poster variations, too, because, like, this one might work really well on social media because the logo is really big, and maybe the other one would work well for printed materials. So you kind of, you've got sort of different things working for different um, contexts. So it's yep. really good to experiment in this way. So you have different hierarchies and purposes of each one. This one is potentially for just talking about the, the festival itself and the other one is giving more focus on the artist lineup. Right, and then let's create another one. We have 
Just a few seconds. No. Yep. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna pop over to my screen in just a couple seconds. So Chris, I'm actually gonna share my screen now. And we're gonna do move on into the um, spotlight. Okay, um, and so if we've got anyone watching from YouTube, make sure you head on over to the Behance page so that you can chime in on the um, chime in on the artist spotlight that we've got going on right now and make sure that you are able to recommend some of your favorites. So for our artist spotlight, we are looking at um, a graphic designer named Suzanne. She is based in Dubai in the UAE. Um, so I spent some time looking at this portfolio um, over the last couple of days. And this is like a really, really beautiful selection of a bunch of different types of work. Um, so we can move into this first project here. This looks like a packaging project for gourmet coffee. I mean, off the bat, something that I really love about Suzanne's work here is the colors that she's using and the texture. Um, so we've got so many different things happening in this mock-up. So we've got sort of the coffee beans that are kind of working in the background. It looks like we've got a couple of coasters here. Um, we have the texture of the coffee cups themselves. Um, I think, Caitlin, you're saying I'm getting some 1990s Nickelodeon rocket power vibes. Oh, you're probably talking about the posters that Chris was working on. Probably not this. Um, let's see. So this is just kind of a really great example overall of some really nice color exploration. Um, the purple and the yellow and sort of looking at different tones of yellow, some different tones of purple. Um, the typography and illustration is really fantastic here. Um, and the presentation is really good. Yeah, the presentation is fantastic. Um, and then we've got these like really close up beauty shots of each of the two. So we've got a medium roasted coffee, a dark roasted coffee. Um, so the two different colors create really distinctive, um, a, a really important distinction between the two different products. And it's a nice picture. Yeah, this, these mock-ups are really, really beautiful. Man, and some of this photography too. I mean, I don't know, maybe um, Suzanne did this in Dimension. I don't know, maybe she photographed mm -hmm. this herself. Um, but this is a really, really great way to sort of explore how the brand might expand into different products. Um, we all love a tote bag. And so I think anytime I'm designing a, a new brand identity, I am definitely going to do a tote bag at some point. Um, that would be, I mean, Chris, I, you, I wonder if you've probably done tote bags for some of the music festivals that you've done before. Um, cool. I'm going to give this a little thumbs up. Yeah. So it's a great example for how you should show your work on the hands. I think it's a really great example. It's a great structure of showing your content and not going crazy with text, actually. And sometimes you just got a struggle just working on the copy lines, just trying to explain too much. And I think that's that was a really great example of how to show your work on the hands. Yeah, absolutely. And this is this. This is really amazing because this is a full screen project on Behance. So you've got, you know, Suzanne really took the time to create this image that takes up the full of the screen with these little illustrations coming down from the top here. And then what looks to be the brand here um, divided, I think. And um, these illustrations, I mean, are just like fantastic. I love the texture of the background really kind of goes a long way in enhancing the like tangibility of these designs. Um, there's sort of a texturized background and a graininess to them. Um, and the way that they all kind of connect into each other as well. This is a beautiful project. Really, really fantastic. These, these remind me of tarot cards and it doesn't actually say, so it says illustrated poster designs, but this is kind of giving me like a tarot card mystical sort of vibe that I'm really liking. And then another really great example of something that you can do in your Behance projects is you can add GIFs and videos as well. So giving it a little bit of motion here is really smart. It kind of spices things up. Motions on portfolios are dope. I love yeah. them. 
Yeah, you should always utilize motion with your work because it just adds an extra, an extra layer to everything. Yeah, wow, this is this is fantastic. This is really beautiful. I'm gonna it's a really beautiful project. give another another thumbs up. If you guys aren't, um, I'll drop the link to Suzanne's um, Behance in the chat after I'm done with the spotlight. But if you're not following her, you should definitely give her a follow. I'm gonna just follow her right now. There we go. Um, then we hire have her. What are you waiting for? Hire oh, her. I mean, I guess look at look. She even has to hire me. So if you guys are looking for a graphic designer, what are you, you waiting for? Hire She's her. Standing. Um, and then we have really cool wine packaging here. Yeah. So, I mean, this this is a fantastic product shot. I mean, we've got a really beautifully designed wine label, but then we've got these look kind of like eucalyptus leaves or some kind of golden leaves coming up from the background mm. that like really pop out. And then behind that is some more different um, like floral arrangements. Um, really gorgeous and then she uh, puts a little bit of context here and tells us a little about what the product is about credits the um, typographers photographers project managers which is a really great thing all designers should really call out their team i think that's really great practice mm -hmm. um but in this case especially i mean the, the photographer really did an amazing job capturing their work here i really love this sort of wine ring you can presume mm -hmm. is like from the bottle of or the bottom of the bottle or maybe from the bottom of the wine glass um that's really really nice and then Shanti, i agree i agree with tony at flowers her color choice is fabulous i totally agree matt mcray is asking is that a 3d render the leaves are reflected very clever clever yeah this i mean it looks like someone spent some a lot of really great time um putting all of this work together in a really fantastic way. This mock-up is really great. Oh, we've got some more motion too. Wow, fantastic. Fantastic, so we had the answer. Yes, there's a lot of 3D with that animation. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow, like this mock-up too, we've got, the, I mean, you know, you could really just put your design onto some business cards, put it into a plain mock-up, but like Suzanne really kind of went above and beyond here with adding these different elements to each side. It, you, it really takes the design home in a really special way. And it looks like there's even some, um, there's some like reflective elements here. So maybe they did some, um, like added some cold, rub downs onto these business cards, which is a really special extra touch. Wow. Yeah, these are really, really beautiful. Some like nice real world context and a thank you. That's a nice little thing. To You're add. welcome. Thank you for showing that, Susanne. I love the project. Everything's looking great. And she's really yeah. good in color as well. Yeah, her colors are amazing. Her mock-ups are amazing. I mean, and this is this is really something to take any brand home, you know, is like mm -hmm. the logo and the different brand elements and the brand system is one thing. But once you pull it all together into all of these different uses, that's when you can really make your brand shine. So here we have a really cool breakdown, it looks like, of some of the graphic elements. Um, so you can tell how much thought was put into um, this sort of emblem right here. So this is this emblem that's part of the logo. There was a lot of thought into how this emblem all stacked together and locked up together. And so that, that shows a really like detail oriented, conscientious way of thinking about it. And then the logo rules here. So how much white space the logo is allowed to have around it when um, put into different contexts, that's really important for designers to think about. Um, and it's great that Susanna gave us um, some of that information as well. Wow, this is really great. Takenia says the color is on harmony. I completely agree with you. Wow, fantastic. Really cool. The, I mean, yeah, you said it right, Chris. I mean, the colors that she's choosing like work really, really well mm -hmm. on she's all really of these projects. Color. 
Very nice. Well, guys, I said it before. I'll say it again. If you're not already following Suzanne, I will drop her Behance into the chat so you guys can give her a follow. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us for this little artist spotlight. Let's head back over to Chris for the last little bit of our... Um, So let's pop back over to Chris and we will finish up our designs. Oh, okay. We are going to, we have more time, right? For working yep, on this. We've got about 20 minutes left. Oh, that's beautiful. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to create, what if we jump to jump, jump? I love this. This is looking great. I love it. Um, and let's see, the name of the designer, thanks for sharing her profile. Her name was Suzanne. So you guys should definitely go check her out and give her a follow. Oh, I made a mistake. Yep. That's nowhere. I need to duplicate the artboard. Hmm artwork and so just one last time if you guys would like to recommend yourselves or any of your friends on behance to be featured in a potential um, future adobe live stream um, you should click that artist spotlight section in the chat section um, above and you can drop some names into there um, we would love to hear any and all suggestions that you guys might have um, and it's really just a great way to get your work out there to get a fellow community members work out there um, if anyone is out there watching us on YouTube, head on over to the be.net slash Adobe Live to join us over here. Suggest some of your friends, suggest yourself for the Artist Spotlight. And doing an announcement poster now. It's not about the headliners or the artists, it's about the festival itself. And then we're gonna create something else. We have a few time, why not? So we've got about 15-ish minutes here. The stream will be finishing up um, about 1.55. And yes, thank you, Viduval, for reminding everyone. Check out the Artist Spotlight tab. Um, I would also like to remind everyone to check out our um, XD Creative, Daily Creative Challenges. Um, we've got one at 2.30 p.m. after this live stream. Um, and then tomorrow we've got Photoshop and Illustrator um, and XD daily creative challenges starting at 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, those are really awesome, sort of a really fun way to um, the draw along with Kyle is going to be really fun, especially because it will be really interactive and it'll be a great way for everyone to sort of interact with the community um, and get to know, the, know other Behance members. So make sure you stick around after this live stream for the... Um, Draw along with Kyle Webster at 2.30 today, 2.30 um, p.m. Pacific time. I made some homework. I downloaded some images from uh, stock.adobe.com because they're teenagers. This is not a teenager, but this is a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some teenagers and some toddlers jumping. And we're going to add it to the artwork and see how it works. Look at those little kids. All oh, those kids are jumping, having so much fun. And they, let's going to do something easy. So just let's get the white. I'm okay having the white. Or to be more tighter, let's use a path. You're going to create a path. I'm going to clip her up. with the white as a background and i'm gonna place it as a sticker you know yeah that's really nice i was kind of thinking i like the white because uh, it does make it feel a little bit like a sticker mm -hmm. okay we have her now i have the path and then i click on command over the path i'm gonna make the selection and I have it. And now I'm going to duplicate this one because I don't want to remove anything else. And she's by herself. Then option, common, common A. I, it's choosing everything. But then I choose 
sheath common C or oh sheath common C, that's right. And I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna paste sheath hair. Mm. Remove the background. What I do with Photoshop, what I just done, when you select here, and I have another element, for example, right? I have this square. If I select all and I select all and I just click on common C and I copy, it's going to copy only that specific layer, right? It's copying just that rectangle, that deep blue rectangle. Mm -hmm. If I select all and I click shift common C, it select everything you're seeing right now. Everything it's viewable on that artwork, it's going to copy everything. It doesn't matter the layer defect it's going to copy everything and you can see now i'm going to create a new one and when i paste it are both layers as one single layer oh i see you mm -hmm. mm. so we have her let's say her line up one Voodoo Val, thank you for dropping the links to those um, daily creative challenges. We've got the XD one, the Illustrator one, and the Photoshop one. So if anyone's interested in checking those out, just click on those links. Um, how much time remaining? Um, less than 10 minutes. Okay, good. Uh, get the key. So just to recap for anyone who might have joined us a little bit late, um, Chris has been working for the last two days now um, on a brand and identity for a children's music festival. Um, the music festival is called Jump, which is why we're seeing a lot of jumping kids right now. Um, and so we spent a lot of yesterday working on the logo for the brand. Um, and today we created a lineup poster. And so we're watching as all of this is coming together um, into the lineup poster, we're pulling some of these jumping people um, that could be used as stickers um, in the lineup poster. Um, but thank everyone so much for joining us um, the last two days. It's been really, really cool to watch Chris's process um, and watch as these designs come to life. Um, if anyone would like to check out the video from yesterday, the live stream video from yesterday, as soon as we wrap up here, you can go and search that. Um, it should be, should be close to the top of the Adobe Behance page. You can also search for it on YouTube and find it pretty easily there on um, the replay. Um, but we've really loved having you guys. Um, Becca says, thanks for sharing guys. Viola says, Voodoo Val don't play. Voodoo Val never plays. She takes her job very seriously. Um, very cool. Oh. We have three. I'm gonna place, I'm gonna use the green one. Let's play with those kids. So we've oh. got our lineup posters here. I really, really love the, like just the main jump festival poster that like encapsulates all of the energy that I would imagine for a children's music festival. Thank you. Now let's call it models. Those are models. <laughs> Matt McRae says, thanks a lot, guys. That was really informative and fun. I appreciate you adding my name to the lineup. Thank you, Matt, for being here. Thank you, especially to Voodoo Val, Annika, Brandon, everyone in our lineup. Thank you to everyone who's participated in this chat. It's been a blast hanging out with you guys. Um, make sure you all stick around for the um, drawing with Kyle T. Webster at 2.30. Um, we have loved having you all here. These stickers look fantastic. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Caroline says, it has been great to see something right from sketch to finish poster. I completely agree with you, Caroline. Maybe, I don't know, just thinking about layout. And all them at the bottom maybe are enough. And one more. So when I'm looking now, it's to avoid symmetry. I don't mm -hmm. want, I, I want to something away from symmetry. 
Yeah, you've got such a very nicely centered poster that it's nice to kind of have some elements that bring mm -hmm. a little bit of um, like variation to the layout. So tension, I have tension here mm -hmm. on the date. So now I'm doing this. Maybe it needs to be here. Marco Flores says, much appreciated. Can't wait for the next live. Thank you so much for joining us, Marco. Um, make sure that you guys are staying active on Behance so you can see the next time that we go live. Make sure that you are um, just checking out all the other live streams. We've got, aside from these sort of main Adobe live streams, we've got a lot of creators who are live streaming all the time on Behance. Um, so just make sure you check out the wide, wide variety of um, all different types of design, um, illustrator tutorials, Photoshop tutorials, um, photography tutorials, like we've got everything on Behance. So make sure you guys are ex really exploring the page and checking everything out, else out that we have. Um, Toinette says, excellent design. Gareth says, thanks, been a great two days. We have it. I think we are done. And I have my kids here for saying hi to everyone. <gasps> Ooh, yes, bring them on. It's We've got just, just a couple more minutes left. So we'd love to hear what they think about this festival. It was in sync with the nanny. <laughs> you can listen to them. Jerry oh Kana. yeah, I can hear them in the background. And... <laughs> <laughs> here we go, look at that. Um, that's distracting. Move away. Noah. You're going to listen a little of Spanish potentially. Very cool. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad we've got our user testers right now for the last couple minutes of this live stream. This is exactly what yes, we need. <laughs> it just happened. They just came and just leave. <laughs> So what do you think so far? We have different options. We have this jam festival with a date, which is used for, it's, it is useful for just announcing the festival and the date. And then we have some other four really colorful options for the lineup, focus on the lineup. Mm -hmm. So what do you think so far? I really like it. Um, I love the color palette as well. It's really intense. It's connected to job. There's a lot of childish mood and feeling and action, right? It's really active. Yep. Yeah, I think that you've got a lot of really amazing energy. I love like the different design elements and the confetti, the colors, the color palette is feels like it perfectly speaks to this. And then mm -hmm. sort of the different variations in design that you have between the confetti and the stickers and then using the logo really big, in some cases really small. I just think Overall, this is a very flexible, like well thought out system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can add. This is, oh, I have something else to do. What if I add a shadow on this? Uh, where's my Pathfinder? Pathfinder, we have them all group. So we're going to start wrapping up, Chris. Um, yes. Thank you all again so much for joining us. Thank you for everyone who participated in the chat. It's been a real pleasure having you guys all here with us through this journey. Um, it's been such a fantastic time watching Chris. Um, if you guys aren't already or haven't already checked out his website, Voodoo Val has dropped um, his website and my website down into the chat. Make sure you follow Chris at Chris Bernay on Instagram. He's going to post some of these posters um, mm -hmm. at some point after this live stream. Um, and make sure you check out his Behance page. Make sure you give him a follow. Um, and thank you guys so much. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. Stay tuned. I'm going to be uploading my portfolio as well. I have three years of work to store sharing. So, so there's lots of work in store for anyone who wants to check us out. Um, so mm -hmm. thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Um, thank you, everyone behind the scenes. And I'm open for uh any questions you want to do on instagram i'm gonna do uh probably tomorrow a live from my instagram for talking to everyone so everyone is invited to it and get ready for some question if you want uh i'm planning to do that tomorrow friday awesome sounds good thank you guys all right i'll see you guys later